First Peter this morning. First Peter chapter number one. First Peter chapter one. I read this, thought this was pretty good. I want to share it with you this morning. In the beginning, God created the earth and rested. God created man and rested. God created woman. And since then, God and no man has rested. <laughs> all right, all right. A married couple on Sunday morning, they began to argue over who's going to make the coffee. And the wife said, well, the scripture teaches the man should make the coffee. The husband replied, where? She opened her Bible and said, right here in Hebrews. <laughs> Amen. First Peter chapter 1, you're there this morning. It's the only, that's the only book the women know right there. See, God. <laughs> Oh, I'm teasing. All right, 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's begin reading. Look, let's follow along. I'll read out loud. You just follow along with me in the scriptures this morning. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Skip down to verse 14 with me. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Holy. I want to preach this morning the sanctification of the Spirit. The sanctification of the Spirit. See the word sanctify there. We look in verse number 2. It says, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. It means to set apart. To set apart. To come out from among. The word church is the word ecclesia. It's a called out assembly. From these things we, we conclude that God is intent for us personally and as a church, a local body, to be set apart personally and collectively. As a saved person, I'm supposed to come out from the world and this church is supposed to come out from the world. God delivers from this uh, new wave today where the church is more like a social gathering place. Then it is the house of worship, the house of Amen. God. Amen. And so this morning, I want to preach the sanctification of the Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, I love you today, and I want to be a blessing. I ask you this morning to put a watch over my lips and help me to speak that which is only truth and honors and glorifies you. May you be high and lifted up this morning in our service today. Have your way in our hearts. I don't know in what way you... Uh, willing to use this uh, message today, but I pray that all of us will be very attentive and that your spirit will speak to us and that we will respond according to your will. We give you the praise for it. If there's one today that's not saved, may this be their day of settling it for all of eternity. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This sanctifying work is solely the work of the Holy Spirit. He accomplishes it Look, if you would, again, in verse number 2, and I want us to kind of get this really deep in our hearts and minds this morning before we really go any further. It says here, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. And let's read this next portion together all the way to the word Spirit. You ready? Here we go. Through sanctification of the Spirit. You see that? Through sanctification of the Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit that works in your life, in my life, as believers. Uh, he also works in the church. He works within us uh, this morning for, for a specific purpose and intent. Listen, we're not, we're not here to just 
Play around. We're here to worship our God. Amen. We're here to worship our God. And this is important. So let me give you three things this morning. First of all, if you want to take notes, you can. But positional sanctification. Positional sanctification. You see, our position is in Christ. It's in Christ. John chapter 1. Take your Bibles and go there with me, if you would, please. The Gospel of John this morning, chapter number 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. And I want you to notice with me in verse number 12. The Bible says this. It says, But as many as received Him, that is, those that have received Jesus, okay, to them gave He power. That is, to those who put, the, the many that believe, those that put their faith in Him, okay, gave He power to become the sons of God or the children of God, okay, even to them that believe on His name. So this morning, uh, the Bible teaches us that at the moment of salvation, our position changes, okay? Uh, the Bible says in John 8, 44, that year of your father the devil. That is, before <coughs> salvation, we were subject to another uh, to, to an, another realm. We were subject to the devil. And that's hard to say, I know. It's hard to really fathom that. But that's what the Bible teaches. Yeah. Jesus said in John 8, 44, year of your father the devil. That's hard. That's a hard thing to even say. But I'm telling you, that's what Jesus says. And, uh, and, and so that was our position before Christ. Psalm 51, 5, the Bible says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. However, good news, amen? Good news, salvation changes all of that. Thank God, salvation changes our position. Now that we have to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we are now subjects of God's kingdom. Amen? We are now His children. We are of another world. Uh, that's why the Bible teaches us that we are strangers. We're pilgrims. We're, we're foreigners. We're just passing through. We're sojourning. We're not, hey, we're not putting the stakes down too deep here because we're passing on. Amen? We're moving on to something much better for the Lord Jesus Christ to be with Him. Uh, take your Bibles and go to Colossians with me. The book of Colossians this morning. If you would. In the book of Colossians, okay? Colossians chapter 1 with me this morning. And I want you to look with me at verse number 12. We're talking about our position changing. At the moment of salvation, we became subjects of the kingdom of God. Colossians chapter 1, look at verse number 12. Let me show you it in Scripture. The Bible says this, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. You see that? Suitable. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints, that is the, that is the saved in light. That is those who are no longer in darkness. Those that have uh, been saved, okay? Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You see that? That's what we were all partakers of before salvation. Okay? And hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen? Praise the Lord for that. So this morning we see that we are now, at the moment of salvation, our position changes and we're no longer a child of the devil we're a child of the king amen we're a child of god um, but let me say this this morning not only is you and i the same individual not only did our position change but the church also positioned in christ take your bibles and go to acts chapter 20 acts chapter 20 now now stay with me now because acts chapter 20 we're going to look at this verse for just a moment here the church is positioned in christ Acts chapter 20, and let's look here together at verse number 28, okay? Acts chapter 20, and look with me at verse 28. And notice what the Bible says right here. It says, take heed, okay? Now take note, okay? Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. Okay, the flock is the, the local New Testament church, okay, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. You see that? Which he hath, what church? Purchased with his own blood. You see this morning, listen, we're not just a called out assembly. We are more than that. We are, we're not just a group of people that, 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 that just 
called out and you know, came together. There's a lot of assemblies in the world. We are a local New Testament church. We are called out from the world unto Christ. Okay, that's what the church is. It's a called out assembly. More than that, it is a called out assembly unto from the world unto Christ. Okay, and that's what we are. We are supposed to, we are positioned differently. That means the church house ought to be different than the, the, the than, than than the other houses. That's right. <laughs> Amen. The church house is supposed to be different. That's what I'm talking about. Our position is changed this morning. And uh, listen, we may come with luggage, but God cleans it up. Amen. God cleans it up. And so position changes. So that's number one. Secondly, progressive. I want you to look with me here at progressive. Take your Bibles and go back to Colossians again. And this time we're going to go to chapter 2. We were in chapter 1. Now we're going to go to chapter 2. If you want a good study about uh, Christ, Colossians is a great book. As a matter of fact, I highlighted the times the name Christ is mentioned. He's the subject, no doubt, of the book of Colossians completely. Uh, it's over and over and over. You can see right there all the pink there. That's that's the names of Christ, how many times he's mentioned. And uh, that's a great, great study right there. But anyway, Colossians chapter 2. Progressive sanctification. Number one was positional. Secondly is progressive. Now I want you to see this with me. You see, to progress is to advance. And that's what... That's what God wants me to do as a, as a believer. And that's what God wants this church to do as a church, a local body, okay? To progress, to advance in a positive direction, all right? Colossians 2, you're there. Look with me at beginning with verse number 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and... Established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Did you see that this morning? Okay, now notice this, notice this. Progressively, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, as you put your faith and trust in the Lord and you're saved, so walk ye in Him. Walking speaks of repetitiveness. It speaks of putting one foot in front of the other. And uh, most of us have been doing that for many, many years now. And just as we walk physically, we're to walk spiritually. That is, the things I used to do, I'm not supposed to continue doing them anymore. As I grow in grace and learn what the Bible teaches me and has for me to know that God reveals things to me through the preaching and the study of His Word, that I am supposed to... Walk upon that. I'm supposed to act it, okay? Act it out in my life, all right? And that's walking in the Spirit. And I'm supposed to do that. And the Bible teaches walking in Him, rooted and built up in Him, establishing the faith, as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. I'm supposed to be moving. I'm supposed to be growing. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a babe in Christ. There's something wrong with staying a babe in Christ. There's nothing wrong with not knowing. There's something wrong with not wanting to know. We ought to want to grow. We ought to want to learn. We ought to want to be uh, more for our Lord and Savior every day of our life because He's the giver of life, of this day. And that's important, church. Listen, now, progressive sanctification. Take your Bibles and go to 1 Thessalonians with me. Take your Bibles and let's go to 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Or I'm going to take a drink of water here while you're turning. 1 Thessalonians 4. All right. Now, this is just talking about personal. This is just you and me. This is my own life, okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and let's look at verse 3. Ready? 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. The Bible says this, For this is the will of God, even your, and here's our word, sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. This is personal. That's what we're talking about now. Personal now, okay? Uh, personally progressing here. He says, know how to, pos verse 4, possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, uh, uh, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that's unlawful lust, okay? Verse 6, that no man go beyond the de and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all flesh, uh, of all such, excuse me, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Verse 7. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto what? Holiness. You see that? You and I have been called to 
holiness. Remember 1 Peter, be ye holy for I am holy. Take your Bibles and go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now you're in Thessalonians, just go turn over maybe two or three pages in your Bible probably. For, uh, this, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And look at verse 21. Here again, we're just talking about progressively growing individually, okay? 2 Timothy 2, verse chapter 2, verse 21. The Bible says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, from what? Well, let's go back up a couple verses here, okay? Let's go back up to verse number 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Can I just tell you this morning, if every person that claimed Jesus as their Savior practiced Christian, what Jesus taught, this world would be a whole lot better off. Amen. Jesus, the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name. Now we can point fingers and say it's their fault, but the problem is God says it's our fault. Look in the mirror, Christian. We're to blame. What's the, the blame is that Christians don't practice Christianity. We need to practice it in the house of God. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm not got to the house of God yet. I'm still on the personal, okay? I'm talking about you and me, you and I. Let's look at it. Uh, let's see, verse number, uh, uh, let's see, eight, eight, let's see, where was I? 18. Uh, 19, excuse me. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Look at verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself, you see that? That's personal. Purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You see that this morning? Listen, there is some things that you and I who claim Christ as our Savior that we need to practice in our life personally. I'm not. It's one thing to come to church and 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 and, and you know be right. Let's be right on Monday. Let's be right on Tuesday. Let's be right at work. Let's be right when we go to the grocery store. Let's be right with our God. Let's say the right things. Do the right things. Be the right. Because why? Because we are reflecting to the world our Lord and Savior. Here. Amen? So we need progressive sanctification. Hey, listen. Things ought to change. The, what are we saying? The song, you know, there's been a great change since I've been what, church? Born again. Since I've been born again. Listen, there's been a great change. The things I used to do, the things I used to say, the things I used to wear, the things I used to listen to, the things I used to watch. There's been a great change since I've been born again. That's what I'm talking about. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not only progressive personal sanctification, but also progressively the church. The church needs also to progress. Take your Bibles and go to Revelation chapter 19 with me. Revelation chapter 19. The church needs to also progress. See, we, you and me, uh, the church is only going to be right with God if the people that make up the church are right with God. <coughs> And so that's a personal responsibility. That's my personal responsibility. That's your personal responsibility. Yeah. Revelation chapter 19. Let's look at verse 7. Look at what Revelation 19, look, look at verse 7. It says, Let us... Be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb, notice this, is come. And his, what church? Wife. Wife. What has she done? Made herself ready. You see that? She progressed. She got herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. You know, anybody, a woman that's going to get married, listen, she doesn't just get up and walk down the aisle, does she? 
She progresses herself. She gets herself ready, adorned for her groom, right? She can't wait to get married. Can I tell you something, church? We need to get ready because the grooms are coming. Jesus is coming, and we and, and the bride. You, we need to get ready. The church is is, is likened in the scripture uh, as a woman. She is the bride. We are to get ready for our Lord to get ready because we're going to be married unto Him. And the churches across America today need to wash their hands and come clean uh, for our God, for our for our for our groom that's coming to take us home. Amen. We need to get ready for Him. Amen. We need to advance from some things. We need to we need to get rid of some things. We need to clean up some things and get ready because when he comes, we don't want to be found, uh, you know, uh, shamed. Amen. We don't want to be found shamed. I'm thinking about advancing from gambling. I, over the years, I've uh, talked with some people about gambling and and well, if, well, as long as I'm giving some money to the to the church, hey, listen, the ends doesn't justify the means. Right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, wrong is wrong, Amen. and right is right, and we got to be Amen. careful, and we never do Amen. wrong with the chance to try to do what's right, and uh, we, we 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 stay with what's right. Uh, take your Bibles if you would. Go to First Timothy chapter six with me. First Timothy chapter six. The church needs to, and and I'm not necessarily. I mean, churches all across. The world, everywhere, We've got to come clean. Get our hands cleaned up. Get ourselves cleaned up. Why? The groom is coming. We got to advance from gambling. First Timothy chapter six, and I want you to notice with me, verse number nine. You're there. The Bible says, First Timothy six nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Notice this. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Listen this morning. There's nothing wrong with money having money, but there is something wrong when money has you. There's something wrong when it controls your life. And listen, uh, we, you and I have got to be careful. We got to understand that this thing of gambling, uh, this thing of investing with the intent of I got to make money, I got to make money. No, my friend, it's time that the church, the house of the living God, trusted God with their finances and invested in what was eternal and stopped trying to invest Amen. only in themselves. Amen. Advance from gambling. Advance from that sin. And come clean of it. Get away from it. It's not right, my friend. Well, if I had a million dollars, I'd tithe. Listen, you won't tithe off a hundred, you ain't going to tithe off a million. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is not more money. The answer is just give it to God. Man. Little as much when God is in it. Obedience is what God desires of us this morning. Progressive sanctification. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 this morning. Look with me here if you would. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 19 with me. Jesus taught us this in the Scriptures. Matthew 6, 19. The Bible says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, you see that this morning? Listen, that's what you and I want to do. We want to set up treasures in heaven. We want to we want to invest in that which is eternal. We want to invest in that which is going to matter uh, uh, past another, you know, the trinkets of this old world. I'm not against having things. Don't misunderstand me. I've got things, and I thank God for what God's blessed me with. But listen, let's don't live for things. Let's live for God. Yeah. Let's live for God. Yeah. That's important. 
Now, I'm not saying you can't do things and you get tax return and you have some fun. We do it too. I, I'm not against all those things, but let's don't forget God in all of it. Amen? Let's don't forget God that gave us health and strength and got us through the year and, and blessed us. Let's remember our God. Let's invest in that which is eternal. Amen. I'm talking about the church needing to advance from sodomy. I'm telling you, I... Uh, Listen, it's, it's rampant today and it's crept into the church house. Yeah. It's crept into the acceptance of it. The Bible says in Leviticus 18, 22, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It mm -hmm. is abomination. Yes. It is abomination. Mm -hmm. Now listen this morning. Uh, God loves the sinner, but God hates the sin. And God doesn't justify this sin. And you, you and I should not justify this sin. Personally, nor collectively as a church. Uh, and it's so sad to me today that there are churches today that are that 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 are uh, uh, letting people uh, 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 just uh, uh, practice this and and, and even uh, stand behind the pulpit in practicing this sin. My friend, this is wicked, Amen. and it ought not be in the house of God. Amen. Now those people need the Lord, and we need to pray for them. And we need to reach out to them. I do believe, I personally believe, that listen, just because somebody sins differently uh, doesn't make my sin any better to the eyes of God than their sin. And I do believe this. I believe that the same grace of God that cleanses me from all my sin is the same grace of God that can cleanse them and save them from their sin. And I do believe that. And I believe that if we, I believe if we tell them, I love them enough to tell them the truth, that the their power is in the Word of God, and God can get a hold of that heart. And I believe most people practicing that sin today are just caught up in it. I really do. I don't believe they're actually in love with the person. I just think they're just caught up in it. And what they need is, 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 is not judgment, but they need someone to love them enough to say, Listen, I can't condone it, but, but, but God loves you. And let me tell you what the Bible says. And if they say, well, I already know that. Well, then say, well, well, then if, if, if you're saved, then you know it's not right. And let God work on that old heart. Uh, listen, God can bring them out of that sin. The same God that brought me out of my sin can bring them out of that sin. But, 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 but we're not helping them by telling them, well, it's okay. God is love and he'll understand. No, he will not. No, he will not. He does not understand. <laughs> Okay, so this morning, let's make sure we stand for the right. And the church house needs to advance and get away from, uh, from the things uh, that it's accepting uh, in the church house. I'm talking about abortion. I I'm appalled at uh, how many, and you say, well, well, they're not independent Baptist churches. It doesn't matter. It it's going to creep in at some point. There is all kinds of uh, denominations that have gathered around. I've been seeing it here of late. Uh, they're, they're gathering at uh, these, uh, and I don't understand it, but they're gathering at these abortion clinics, and, and, and they're asking God to bless these abortion clinics. I mean, are you kidding me? What is the matter with these? And these are supposed to be preachers, and they're supposed to be uh, people that are, 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 are of faith, and everything else and, uh, and and justifying it. My friend, you can't justify what God did not justify. Amen. In His Word, God is against abortion. Amen. It's murder. Amen. It's wicked. Yeah. It's sin. And the church needs to come out from it. The church Amen. needs to wash her hands of it. The no church, I don't care what denomination tagged to it because they all put us in the same bowl so they all ought to just say what well, the Bible says and stay with that. Amen? Amen. If they claim it, they ought to preach it. <laughs> And uh, take your Bibles and go to Psalm 139. There's places we can go, but let's just go there. Psalm 139. And the Bible teaches us very plainly in Psalm 139 that, listen, life doesn't begin when the baby comes out of that womb. That baby's already alive. It's already a living being. It has an eternal soul already. Life begins at conception. It's in the womb of that yeah. mother being prepared. Yeah. And God has a purpose for it already. Yeah. And to take the life of that baby is murder, my friend. It's murder. Psalm 139. Look at verse 14. And the Bible says this, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that, excuse me, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance. Yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, yeah. which in continuance were 
uh, uh, fashion when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. And I believe those precious thoughts were before that uh, before even coming forth. The Lord already knows that baby in the womb of that mama. And the Lord already is thinking and, and already has a uh, loves and cares for that baby before it ever comes forth. This morning, you and I need to understand that God's not for that. God's against that. And if God's against it, you and I ought to be against it personally, and we ought to be against it as a church. As a church, we ought to be against these things. Listen, the church house needs to clean their hands up and come out from among this old world. Not just put, not just personally, but as a church. But listen, you say, well, well, you know, when people say Liberty Baptist Church, that ought to mean something. People in the community ought to know, well, I know what that church believes. That ought to mean something. You know, not just, well, I know what the preacher preaches, but the Sunday school teachers believe this, and the deacons believe this, and the, and, and the people in the pew believe this. No, we as a church need to believe this. <laughs> As a church, we need to stand firm and strong on what God is against and what, and, and what God is for. It's time the church became mobile again, got active again, advanced from some things, advanced from the lies that she covers up, advanced from deceit, advanced from fornication. For the Bible says marriage is honorable but all, but, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. We need to come out from that stuff, come out from an advancement from grudges and bitterness and pride and transgenderism. Amen. We need to come out from that stuff. Selfishness and thievery, gossip and cliques and slothful service. I'm saying this morning it's time for revival to hit the house of God. Amen. Positional sanctification. Our position changed. Progressive sanctification. As a believer, I am to be growing in grace. As a church, we are to be growing in grace. Amen? Alright. Let me give you my third one this morning. And I'll be done. And that's perfect sanctification. Take your Bibles and go back to 1 Thessalonians with me. Now, positional sanctification, that's solely up to God. I, I can't save myself. Only the Lord can save me. The Lord bought the church by, with His precious blood. But progressive sanctification, that's my responsibility. That's yours. That's as a church. It's our job. It's my job as a pastor to continue to study and grow in grace. It's your job as a believer to grow in grace. But perfect sanctification. Now, look here if you would in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look with me at verse 23. Perfect sanctification. Chapter 5, verse 23. The Bible says, And the very God of peace, there's our word, sanctify, you holy, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Now look over with me in 1 John. Not, not the Gospel of John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Alright. 1 John chapter 3. And look at verse number 2 with me. Okay? The Bible says this right here. 1 John 3, 2. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. There's our position. Now we're in Christ. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. We have a knowledge of understanding, as we know, that when He shall appear, that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. There's the progressive 
That's the growing in grace. Purifieth himself, even as he is pure. That is in Christ. We are seen blameless, positional. So I want you to see that perfect. That is one day we shall be like him. Now my Lord is perfect. Now this morning I'm not perfect. And this morning you're not perfect. I think about what Curtis Hudson uh, said. I got it from someone else. I don't remember who he got it from. But, but he's the one I remember the quote from. He said, Lord, if I'm going to be like you someday, why not now when I can do the most good? And you know, I've often thought about that quote. Um, Lord, there's so much more I could do <laughs> if my flesh would just die. <laughs> you know, it gets in the way. My pride sometimes gets in the way. My, 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 you know, my stinginess, whatever, it just gets in the way. So much more God could do. Lord, if I'm going to be like you someday, why not now when I can do the most good? And then let me say this, church. If one day we're going to be ready, Revelation 19 says the bride has going to, is going to make herself ready. If one day, church, we're going to be clean and be ready, why not now? Why not now? If, if one day we're going to get cleaned up for the groom, we're going to be ready when we come before our God. He's going to make us ready. We're going to get ready. But why not now? Why not now? Why not now? See, we're living in a day-to-day -day where, the, where the church is trying to conform to the world. To try to reach the world. But you cannot reach the world if you are the world. God didn't call us out to be the, what He called us from. He called us out to be different. And I, I think about that song that the McCain is saying. I think about that song, Dare to be Different. I, I like that song, Dare to be Different. That's what God called us to be, different. Different. So, this morning, without God's help, I can't be, I can't do that, you can't do that. He changed, he, he, our position changed. I am in Christ. Now I am to grow in Christ. Because one day I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the presence of my Lord. What, what a day that's going to be. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be like him. I want to see him. I want to know him as he is. But if, I can, if I'm going to be like that one day, why not work on it now? Well, I'm, you know, I'm human. Yeah. But just because we know we're human doesn't mean we have to show everybody how human we are. Well, you know, I'm a man. Well, it's time that we raise the level of the bar for manhood. <laughs> you know, the, you know what I'm saying. And womanhood. We need good godly men and we need good godly women. Why? Because we've got some young people that are looking for someone to follow. And they're going to follow somebody. They are. They're going to follow somebody. That the, the young people in our church, listen, those young people in that room back there, let me tell you something, they're following somebody already. And if they're going to, your kids, my kids, and the kids we pick up, listen, they're following somebody. If they're going to follow somebody, why not follow the church that is following Christ? Mm -hmm. Why not follow the men and women of God that are, that are following Christ? Because they're going to follow somebody. Let's bow our heads. Our Father God, I do love you this morning. And I thank you so much for the precious Word of God. Father God, I don't know today if there's one in our service that's not sure of where they're going to spend an eternity. But Father God, I do pray this morning if there's one that doesn't know you. I pray that in just a moment, even if there's just a slight of doubt, I pray they'll step out and walk down the aisle and allow me to take the Word of God or get someone to take the Word of God and show them how they can eternally settle it this morning. And then, Father God, there may be some other decisions that are to be made this morning. I pray you have your way in this service, in this invitation. May we respond according to your leading. May you be glorified in it all. 
we pray in the lovely name of Jesus. Would you stand, please, as the organist plays this morning? The altar is open. If God is leading you, some are coming, you just come this morning. And you do business with God this morning.